The removal of the effect of moratorium or ban on energy exploration in this country, or if you like, um, gas and oil energy or geothermal exploration in this country. I think that's a rather major move, given the impact of um, the green-driven moratorium on, on such prospect in this country. So for reaction to this and what it might mean as a policy, uh, we're joined now by John Carnegie. He's the CEO of the Energy Resources Aotearoa, which is their rebranded name for the people who go looking for oil and gas and do energy stuff in the country. Uh, John, lovely to have you uh, in the studio with us again. Welcome. Yeah, good, good morning, Sean. And, and by the way, we're far wider in terms of our membership. We cover yeah. the energy sector. The energy sector. All right. Thank okay. You. Energy resources. That, that is something with a unicorn on it. All right. Um, first, what is your understanding of ACT's proposed policy change in this area? Oh, look, um, you know, we've only read the... Uh, the policy uh, two-pager um, that they put out, but uh, from that it's fairly clear that they're going to uh, reverse the offshore and other than Taranaki onshore oil and gas exploration ban. At the moment, um, the, up, the upstream, the oil explorers and producers are only confined to their existing permit areas. That's right, yeah. This will give them the ability to... Uh, do a whole range of other things, including um, seek new new permits, both offshore and onshore, onshore. for oil and gas. Oil and gas. Okay. Yeah. Um, what impact has the current policy setting had on the industry and those who would look to do that sort of prospecting? Oh uh, well, um, best uh, summed up by, uh, in fact, one of our, our previous members who said they got the memo. They're now investing in Australia. Mm. So, you know, while the, while, while the sector is working hard to ensure that they maintain security of supply, there's a lot of investment mm. actually has gone um, both on and offshore tar Taranaki. Um, it's dampened the incentive to invest. And as a result, we've had recent write-downs um, in the latest MB data of res reserves, which is extremely alarming mm. actually um some of those if you look at some of the, that data it shows actually we've got an energy gap opening up um possibly so an energy shortage um possibly from 2026 or 2027 so that's really close mm. all right the other thing that would be required for this uh policy announcement um and we're in the middle of an election campaign so you gotta take everything with, <laughs> with a grain of salt uh, is that the National Party would agree with it because they will be the senior partner if there were to be a, a government made up of a coalition of ACT and National. Do you have any indications from National as, where, as to where they are on this policy? I'd note they tend to be a bit more woke when it comes to climate change and the like, hunting the middle ground. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you make that commentary, Sean, but um, from... From all I can do is take their public pronouncements. Yeah. Uh, Christopher Luxon has made a number of public announcements recorded in the media that they're going to reverse the oil and gas ban and we can only take them at their word. Okay, so this means that you, a change of government would mean a change in this policy because we've got the two major components of that government saying this is what they'd do. <sighs> but I wonder, for an industry that I know has high development costs and long lead times. And to be honest, it's a bit of a game of roulette looking for energy. It's like prospecting for gold. It's like buying a bloody lotto ticket. So I'm wondering, having had the disappointment with very little consultation of being shut down, just how eager, particularly uh, multinational or international companies are going to be to get back into prospecting and oil and gas exploration in New Zealand. Well, that's a, a really good question, Sean. I mean, I guess from our perspective, it's important that we don't get ahead of ourselves. Um, firstly, this is just an announcement, um, as we've heard from uh, both now ACT and the National Party. But I think uh, being realistic, um, it's not, not going to be a silver bullet. Um, it's going to take time to revitalise uh, the sector. And in fact, I s expect, um, and you have kind of leaned into this, I expect it will take a reasonable amount of time for the sector to regain confidence um, and get enough confidence to explore in new greenfield mm. uh, permits. In fact, you know, the, the, the key benefit actually of this policy announcement and hopefully 
um, it's overturning is that gas is increasingly needed to fill the energy gap and that um, it's, it's, um, it's important to underpin actually the growing renewables that we see come through. Mm. Okay.